All right, what is going down? What is up? What's good? In Jesus' name, glory to God. Um, so good to be in the land of the living. One more again to give God glory and give God praise. Man, the more and more I, I um, look over my life, and the more and more I see what's going on in, in church ministry and church business and things like that, and sometimes you say to yourself, well, you missed the mark or you missed opportunities, you know, and, and you start thinking to yourself, well, um, um, perhaps you could have met this guy or met this person or in ministry and, and, and going far. And what, what you we call what we call going far in ministry. Um, and you begin to say, well, well, may, maybe I missed the mark. But when you start looking at the foolishness and the craziness that people are doing now, <laughs> you say, man, I'm just going to wait on the Lord. Go <laughs> Somebody right now, you're a pastor right now, and you want to rub elbows with certain ministries. Um, you want to rub elbows with somebody man, you may have seen in a word network. You're trying to get big. You're trying to grow your ministry and different things. Um, let God do it. Let God do it. Uh -huh. Don't compromise yourself. Don't compromise the word of God. Don't put anything in the word of God that's not there. Don't take anything out that is there. Uh, don't, 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 no. Rabo do shikaraba. Uh, I'm understanding now what profit in a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul or what would a man give in exchange for his soul and I'm, I'm, I'm understanding now that that was just not for somebody trying to seek some money we got a, I mean wow I mean I'm, I'm listening to these things uh, and different things uh, heresies and different things that people are bringing out and people are taking out and putting in and different things uh, and I'm like whoa and then you got the, the politics of it all you got the things that you gotta say and not say and all that stuff because maybe perhaps you compromise your integrity or yourself or the word of God it's crazy <laughs> all to get on somebody's pulpit all to get on somebody's stage all to get on somebody's show just to get, some, get notarized nope and now I see why the Lord and why I had to take a certain route. And the journey is not over. Your journey is not over. Your story is not over. It's done, it does not yet appear what you shall be. But one thing's for certain, we, when we shall see him, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. My God. So for those of you who think you've missed the mark. For those pastors with a hundred members. Think you should have a thousand. No man. Bless those hundred. Those that pastor right now that has about 20 members. Oh I should have. Nope. Bless those 20. Those right now. Stop looking at TV. And stop looking at comparing yourself to other ministries. Stop looking at TVs and stop looking at uh, folks who are rubbing elbows with politicians and, and superstars and movie stars and saying, well, that should, should be, no, it should not be you. Because <laughs> you don't know what that person coming across the television screen had to do to get in certain rooms. Stop that. Stop comparing yourself. Preacher, stop comparing yourself. Stop trying to preach like that man on TV. Preach like God. Uh, put it in your heart to do. Stop copying cat and trying to imitate. What does God have to say through you? See, I look at the disciples, and as I'm in, 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 as we get, Peter didn't try to be like John, and John didn't try to be like Peter. James wasn't trying to be like John. Philip wasn't trying to be like Bartholomew. I mean, we we gotta. All of them were seeking to, to be like Jesus, and they, and they had to do it in their own way. So I was 12 of them, which debunks the foolishness that people say, well, I don't want to go to church because there's so many different churches. And I don't want to go to church because there's so many different ones. Well, it was 12 different disciples. If it just left up to one church and one thing, God would just pick Peter and be done with it. 
but he picked 12. Rabba Shikura Basa. Rebo, so the enemy is, uh, he's, a, he's the enemy of confusion. Even now. Yeah, don't be scared of him. But rebuke him. And let me show you something right now in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 to my everlasting shame. And you know, I forgot my Bible at home. That, that ain't, ooh. And even though we got the Bible on the, on the computer and the iPads and phones, I'm, I don't like that. Yeah, I don't really. I, I'm, I'm traditional. I, I love the, the pages, the papers. It's just something about it, you know. Can't be replaced. Ain't nothing like it. And all these different versions of the Bible is cool, but I just like the particular um, King James. And if I can go back farther, uh, those versions also, which really is just a translation, because you got to understand the, the Bible was written in Hebrew and, and in Greek and some Latin. So those words had to be translated to English to fit our language. You may have over there in different parts of the world, the Bible has to be translated to their language. It's no controversy. You gotta be trying unless you can read Hebrew. <laughs> unless you can good at reading Greek. Uh net probably those words gotta be translated to see, you know, and, and for you to understand. Let me show you something in First Corinthians chapter six. This is was, was was really put into us in Bible study. I'm just gonna read this and then and, and it is what it is. Uh, it says, Dare any of you having a matter against another Go to the law before the unjust and not before the saints? He's asking the question. Paul is asking the question to the Corinthian church. And he says, because we had some people in the Corinthian church, we had some saints, we had some people in the Corinthian church, they were suing one another at the law. So Paul said, you know, dare any of you having a matter against another go to the law before the unjust and not before the saints? Some things got to be, this thing has to be handled in-house. Do you not know the saints shall judge the world? Did you know that? But if you are a saint, if you're a Christian right now, did you not know that saints shall judge the world? And that the world be judged by you, are you unworthy to judge the smallest matters? No, you not. You, you, we shall judge angels. So we're going to judge the world, we're going to judge angels. Now, 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 I'm reading this. It's Shakar. But here's something that most People, most preachers, want to admit. We read the word of God. Doesn't mean we understand everything that's in it. Because I don't know exactly what we're going to judge angels about. <laughs> and I heard people explain different things. Shama. Glory to God. So, but I never teach or do anything that I can't explain. Shama. And neither do I make things up. And it's unfortunately you have people in big auditoriums, big pulpits, big followers that will make something up. <laughs> because sometimes we think, well, if it seems like it's a lot of people in here, it's a big following. So everything that's coming out this uh, man's mouth must be right. It's like going to the doctor. Well, he has a white coat on. So he everything that he's telling me must be right. And, and true, could, could be, you know. But one of the things about uh, Christians in, 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 the, in the Bible, in the Bible, biblical days, especially the New Testament, um, they didn't just go off what was said by the pastor or the apostles. What they did was actually search the scriptures themselves to make sure that that man that was teaching them the word or preaching to them the word was preaching to them, well, the right things. Ha <laughs> He said, so he says, now you should judge the world. You should judge angels. Oh, watch this now. How much more things that pertain to this life? If you didn't have judgments of these things pertaining to this life, set them to judge who are least esteemed in the church. I speak to your shame. It is so that there is not a wise man among you. No, not one that shall be able to judge between brethren and this brethren. He's saying, why would you go to the law? Why would you go to the world, especially to judge church matters? Why would you go to the world to judge spiritual matters? 
Why would you go to the world to judge um, things concerning and, and false concerning you too and disagreements concerning you too? If you're Christians, if you are uh, uh, brothering in Christ, uh, you can take that before the church. <laughs> he said, I speak to you saying, watch this now, but brother go up to the law with brother and before the unbelievers. He's saying that if you two are believers in Christ, and yet here you are going to the judge or going to the law, taking your other brother to court. Shama. <laughs> he says, nay, watch this now. Now, therefore, there is other your fault among you because you go to law with one another. Why do you not rather take wrong? Why do you not rather suffer yourself to be defrauded? Nay, you do wrong and defraud. And that your brethren, know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, I heard this, these next verses of scripture, I'm getting ready to read. A lot of pastors use this, a lot of pastors I've heard use these next scriptures trying to tell saved folks who have already accepted Christ that they're going to hell. And I don't believe that's what it's saying. <laughs> you have to look at what's been said already in the previous verses. He's telling them, he's telling the church, don't go to the unrighteous um, to settle disputes among, uh, among one another. You ought to go to the saints. Now watch this. <laughs> But And he's getting ready to tell them because obviously they felt like the unrighteous is where they need to be to solve their issues. And what Paul is getting ready to do is tell them, well, here's what the unrighteous do. So when you go before the law, when you take your brother and, and sister before the judges and different things that you're doing to one another, and you, but you, you trust in unbelievers to... Um, set of disputes with one, one, one another, here's what you're doing. And here's, here are the people that you're going before. Now watch this. He says, know ye not. This is 1 Corinthians 6 and verse 9. He says, know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. He says, he's, he's talking about the unrighteous. He's talking about unbelievers. He ain't talking about the church, folks. <laughs> He says, now be not deceived, neither fornicators, people having sex without, without marriage, not being married, nor idolaters, people who are idol worshiping, have uh, uh, idol gods, people who are, and a lot of things can be your idol god, you know, <laughs> you can be worshiping a lot of things, putting that thing before God. He says, no adulterers. You know what adultery is, right? Hopefully, hopefully you know what it is. You know, that's somebody who's having sex outside of their marriage. No infinite. First Corinthians 6, 9. He says, nor infinite. Infinite is men who are acting like women and women acting like men. No abuse of themselves of mankind. Sodomites. Nor thieves, nor covenants, people who are coveting people's ministry, marriage, wife, uh, how some of you are coveting, coveting a lot of things. Nor drunkards, nor revilers. Revilers are people who are um, just criticizing, harsh criticizing. Um, those type of people. Nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Now, that's what Paul just said. The unrighteous. And he's listening to some of the things that the unrighteous are involved in. He's not talking to the church, telling them they're they're that and they're going to hell and they're not saved. He didn't call it, he ain't calling the church unrighteous. He just called these same people in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. He called them saints. Even though they got a lot of foolishness going on in their church. He called them saints. He didn't call them unrighteous. He called them the unrighteous people the people who are not saved. That's who he's talking about. And he's trying to make a point to the church is that here's the people and the character of the people that you're going before telling them to judge you and your matters, church matters. It kind of 
it, it kind of touches on how church folks idolize folks in the world. You got to allow that now where people will trying to chime in, who are unbelievers, chiming in on what Christian life should be. But he's not talking to, he's talking to Shama Doko. That's according to what, what I'm looking at here. Now, a lot of preachers, you know, use these scriptures to say, say folks are going to hell. Because, uh, don't, don't get me wrong, there are some people who believe on Jesus there are some people who've been baptized in Jesus' name. There are some tongue-talking folks. There are some folks who believe who are actually struggling with the stuff that he just listed. That's church folks right now. They're struggling with fornications, idolatries. They're struggling with adultery. Some of them right now are struggling with infinite. Some are struggling with abusing themselves of mankind. Some of them right now may be thieves, covetous, drunkards, revelers, extortioners. It may be some people struggling with that who believe. But dang, who are you talking to? He's not talking to the saints. He's telling the saints that these are the unrighteous and these are the people that you're going before to settle your disputes and settle your matters. I mean, just... Uh, <laughs> and uh, like I said, there's people who, who want to send people to hell off these scriptures in, and and... It's people who I actually respect. They listen to and respect very deeply. But I just disagree with them on this point that that is not whom Paul is talking about. He's not talking about the saints when he lists these things out. He's talking about the unrighteous. You can't be unrighteous and righteous at the same time. You can't be saved and unsaved at the same time. You can't. It just can't go down. It just can't happen. David, when he messed up with Bathsheba, was the king. After he messed up with Bathsheba, he still was the king. <laughs> he still was the man of God after he messed up. He just he had to repent. He had to ask for forgiveness. He had to suffer. But he's still the man of God. It is it just it just it, his his label in heaven is not an adulterer or a murderer. It's a saint. It's saved. But let us go deeper. Um, so let's, let's, let us go on here. Hmm. So this is six verse, uh, first Corinthians chapter six and verse number 11. Let's see what else it says. And such were some of you. He said, such were some of you. Some of you were involved in this, but you are washed. Why? So why are they not? It's interesting. And sometimes, and I never, um, ooh, oh, it's getting busy. I'm going to have to get out of here in a minute. Hope that man ain't coming over here with me. Lord have mercy. It is interesting now that it's interesting, very interesting. It's always interesting that when we look at these things and when we when we understand and figure some of these things out and what what's being said here. Now he says, such were some of you. Now he says, such were some of you. And 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 that begs the thing, okay, well, that means that. The church folks and saints, you know, they're not doing this. No more. They, they're not doing this no more. They're not. They're not. They're not. Um, uh, obviously, they must not be fornicating no more. Church folks must not be committing adultery. They must not be having an idolatry. They don't, they're not infinite. They're not abusing themselves of mankind. Church folks don't don't steal. Don't covenant. They ain't, they ain't drunkards. They ain't revilers. They ain't extortioners. And so when he says such were some of you, it it tends to think that well. That's what he's saying that they don't do this no more. That I don't believe that's what he's saying. They're, they're just <laughs> because he said, such were some of you. Now watch this now. Shama dokobasi. He says, but you are washed. Wait a minute. Verse number 11, he says, such were some of you. Watch this now. But he didn't say, but you guys are not doing this anymore. Now we know they are doing something because when a chapter first started, First Corinthians chapter one, we see where they had divisions. We see where they had schism. We see where they had um, uh, somebody was committing a sexual acts in the church. We see all that going on in that church. Not only that, we see them not um, being able to take the Lord's supper without some people getting drunk, eating up everything. We see that. So, what does he mean? Such were some of you, because 
Looks like to me, Paul, this folks still got some things going on, if that's what he's saying. But what he's saying, <laughs> but here's what I believe he's saying. He says, but such were some of you, but you are washed. They have been washed from their adulteries and fornications. They have been washed from their um, infinite and abusing themselves of mankind. No, no doubt. Don't get me wrong. You're doing these things. We do have to repent. We do suffer. We do have to ask for forgiveness. I don't know about think I'm saying it's all right to go out and make something happen. No, you know good and well. It ain't all right to go out and make something happen. Don't use a preacher or use somebody else or use me or use somebody coming on these things airways and saying, well, that man said, no, he didn't. No, I did not. But what I'm saying is you've been washed from that. He says you've been sanctified. You've been set apart. You are, But you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus. He says you've been washed. You've been sanctified and you've been declared righteous. You've been washed from your sins. You've been sanctified, set apart by the Lord Jesus Christ. And you have been uh, justified, declared righteous in the name. He declared you righteous. <laughs> but let's go deeper. Well, uh, All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. Now watch this. This is verse 12. He says, all things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under power of any. All things are lawful unto me. But all things are not helpful. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under power of any. I pray right now in the name of Jesus Christ and Nazareth that you take the scripture that when he says, I will not be brought under power of any. Don't let anything control your life. Don't let food control it. Don't let a certain drink control it. Don't let fornication, adulteries, don't let um, uh, covetousness, don't let these things control you and control your life. He says meats for the belly. Don't let meat control your life. Don't let food control. Meats for the belly and the belly for meats. But God shall destroy both it and them. Do you see that? God going to destroy both the meat and the belly. But God shall destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for fornication, but for the Lord. And the Lord for the body. Did you see that? It's so hard. I once wrote a book called Secret Sins, and then we later, you know, changed the title to uh, The Sexual Demon in Church. But um, when it comes to fornication, which is sex with someone that you're not married to, it's so hard, ain't it? <laughs> but if you're going to be God's kid, if you're going to be um, um, saved and fill up with the gift of the Spirit, if you're going to be a believer on Christ and walk with Him, your, form, your sexual appetite, this fornication got to be run under control. And here's why. Because, because, look, it can ultimately. Hey, Aaron, I forgot to check that trailer. It, it, look, look, it can ultimately destroy your life. And here's what I'm talking about. It can destroy your health. It can destroy your mind. It can destroy your ministry. It can destroy your marriage. It can destroy your employment, employment, unemployment. It can destroy. It can destroy your pocketbook. It can destroy a lot of things. That's what happened to David. That's what happened to Samson. That's what. That's what. Ah, Shikul. Can we go deeper into this thing? It happens to a lot of people, and they find themselves distracted by the flesh. Heba toko. No mean. They don't mean they ain't saved. No, it doesn't mean they ain't saved. At all. But he says the body is not for fornication, but for the Lord, the Lord for the body. It, it just means that they, you, you got to repent. You could be doing some things right now in your body, and you can feel like, oh my God. Um, and I'm talking to I'm talking to believers, uh, not unbelievers. If you wanna uh, uh, hear this, then God blah bless you. But this message right here is for the church, it's for the believers. Paul is writing this letter to the church. He didn't write it to the world. He wrote it to the church. 
<laughs> That's why it's amazing to me why and how that if you're an unbeliever in, in the world, why in the world would you criticize something that you don't even believe in from the get-go anyway? If you don't believe on Jesus Christ, you don't believe that Jesus Christ died for sins of the world, if you don't believe in all this, then why in the world would you, how would I, why would I criticize I don't even believe in that. But if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, then this is for you. He says, the body. Nobody says walking with Christ is easy. Nobody is saying disciplining your flesh is easy. Especially if you are someone whom, should I say, had a wild sexual upbringing. Yes, if you someone who had a wild I mean, you just gone. I mean, you from a from, man, matter of fact, some of you even from some of you started early. Some of you might have started in your twenties, but some of you, yeah, maybe in your teens, but some of you, I ain't gonna go to low because I don't want nobody to come. But some of you, I mean, woo. And it's just been normal. But the problem is, is that once you get saved, what was normal yesterday. Becomes becomes not acceptable today, and <laughs> it was normal before you got saved. You, you can have a woman, and you ain't gotta have, be a playboy, or you, you can just have somebody that you see in and you have sex with three or four times a week, and and then, or you might have been just a playboy out here. You had three or four women a week. Some of you women, you might have you might have just had one man, or you might have had you know, and. And you saw it was nothing wrong with that. But when you got saved, and we got filled up with the gift of the Spirit of God, and for a while, no, and for a while, they keep coming, they keep coming around. And for a while, look, I'm trying to listen from the man call. And for a while, for a while now, when you first got saved, you was just turning down the devil every, everywhere. Say, uh uh. Nope. Uh oh, look. Uh, old boyfriends would call, and you'd be like, nope. Ex-girlfriend would call, and you're like, nope. Right, right. This one would call. That one would call. Oh, you're like, nope, nope. Turn down everybody. But you started noticing something, and the more and more you walk with God, you start noticing now that your flesh, you start having desires again. You're like, what's going on? Because in, and oftentimes the church will tell you, see, the church is going to tell you that you're saved, but the church doesn't tell you that your flesh is not saved. Yes, this flesh, this this. That's, that's not saved. That this flesh got to be brought under subjection. It had, while you're walking with Christ on the earth, it has to be brought under subjection. And then when Christ comes back, of course, it'll be changed. Now, you start having desires. So now, when you start having desires, say you do slip up. And do something you're not supposed to do. Now, all of a sudden, and then now, you're not even going to tell anybody because you're ashamed. You're not going to tell nobody because you're scared. You're not going to ask for prayer. You're not going to, you know, because, you know. Now, you may, hopefully you may repent to God and ask God to forgive you. And he will. Ask him to strengthen you and he will. But what you got to understand is the flesh has to be brought under subjection. That's why a good fasting and prayer life. Reggie, come on so back, Reggie. A good, fast, a good fasting and prayer life is, 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 is essential to rebuking the flesh. Especially if you're a person. Who has a wild? Because some of you just have been wild. <laughs> and then they both sigh. And you ain't the only one past. There's some pastors out there that have been wild. There's some pastors out there right now that can't tame the flesh. Big pastors, too. Famous pastors. I mean, not just the small guys with the little church, but the big, you know, the big boys. I put them, you know. So, one thing you got to learn about this, you're not alone in this fight. I see a lot of people, especially around this time, when you, it's, you're going to be April now, so you get four months in, but usually around January, you know, people start making the New Year's resolutions. I see people a lot of times, they say celibacy is one of the things they want to do. And that person is doing that for a reason. They're tired. They're tired of being out here, giving up themselves to this one and that one. Can't find real love. 
somebody don't lie to them and said they was, you know, you was the only one and, and all that foolishness. And all of a sudden, next thing you know, that man, not only does he have, a, not only does he not, you're not the only one. That man, you mess with, got a wife. Uh, the woman said, well, uh, you're the only one and blah, blah, blah. And in and, and the same line, she, she, she mess around, she mess around too. And sometimes you do get tired. A lot of times people get tired. Somebody you trust it, you don't trust it with their, your body. They don't gave it an STD. Or they don't got you pregnant and they don't took off running because they, they, they ain't even from here. They, they lied and said, well, I'm, I'm from Michigan. And that man from Texas, he he he, he from Plano. He, he can't go back home. He from Plano, Texas. <laughs> All kind of stuff people got out there. That happens. That could happen. Like I said, this message is for the church. But if you're an unbeliever, by all means, listen. What is listen? That's why I don't stand in criticism. Why would I criticize something that I don't even believe in? <laughs> what? Well, why would I go to uh, the the Muslim meetings and different things and criticize what they're talking about? I don't even believe in it. Ain't my religion. I don't even believe in all that. What? 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 What am I to criticize? What? What I'm doing? Shikara botohu. It's just my personal opinion. But let, let, let's see. Let, well, but let's get back into 1 Corinthians 6. And 12. <sighs> he says, I will not be brought under the power of any. Now watch this. He says this in 13. Meats for the belly and the belly for meats. But God shall destroy both it and them. Now watch this now. Now the body is not for fornication, but for the Lord. And the Lord for the body. You saw to say, Lord, help me. I still say it to this day, even though, Lord help me, you know, but look, I cut myself really, I'm talking about this, but look, at, yeah, Lord help me. Because that's what, guess what, now, let me tell you something, just because you can control your flesh, doesn't mean you just run off and get married to anybody. Just because you can't control your sexual appetite, don't mean you go out here and just say I do to any, anybody, because that's going to end in disaster, a lot of times to do. <laughs> Glory to God. So, just because I'm married doesn't mean I'm not qualified to speak on sexual situations and being single and trying to be live safe. Because I've been there. <laughs> and I thank God that God blessed me with someone. Kabo da shukura baha. He blessed with someone. He'll bless you too. Glory to God. Now, 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 now. Your life is not totally ruined just because you went out there and made some. Your, your life is not totally gone just because you, you out here in these streets. But right now, then they have called out by sea. We're trying to let you know in Jesus' name as we go on this break. We're just, just trying to let you know in Jesus' name it doesn't have to be that way. You can stop it right now. If you put into practice fasting and prayer. Jesus says something very interesting when, he was, when his disciples were trying to cast out a demon and they couldn't do it. The, the disciples were trying to cast out a demon and they couldn't do it. And so they had brought the demon possessed to Jesus. And of course, Jesus cast the demon out. And the disciples asked privately, why could not we do it? Why could not we cast him out? And Jesus said, this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. Some things in life, it just won't go away, but by prayer and fasting. Do you have the ability to say no? Do you have the ability to say, mm, no, I'm, I'm good. I'm going to wait on the Lord. It comes with discipline. It comes with experience. It comes with being tired. It comes with getting the word. Also, it comes with prayer and fasting. It it is something that, you know, <laughs> and sometimes when you, you messed up, suddenly you feel like, well, what's the use? I'm just going to keep going. <laughs> I still call by. I, I seen that go down too. But guess what in Jesus' name? I submit this to you. Just because you're out there now doesn't mean you're always going to be out there. I believe that God has the ability, the knowledge, the wisdom, 
that Shakur. They know the end from the beginning. And because he does, I do, do believe that sometimes, oftentimes, perhaps a lot of times in your life, you will find yourself so heartbroken over something and over someone that you won't allow yourself to go out there again. Sometimes you will say to yourself, God, why you didn't keep me from this heartbreak? Because without the heartbreak, you wouldn't have changed. Shabbat Sukuraba. Without going through that divorce, you wouldn't have changed. Without going through this thing, you wouldn't have changed. You just would have kept going. But now, I got you to the spot now where you're so tired. And you're hurt. Now you can hear the voice of the Lord calling you out. And listen, it's hard to hear God calling you out of something when your flesh has begun to like it. Here's one of the things that the church makes a mistake on when they talk about sexual relations. Here's one of the things that they make the mistakes with. They try to convince people. They'll, be, they'll try to convince people that sex isn't pleasurable. Well, we all know that's a lie. One of the things that the Bible says about sin is this. It, it, the Bible talks about the man Moses. You know the man Moses? Moses was actually set for life. He didn't have to um, he didn't have to be deliberate. He didn't have to acknowledge his own people. He could have just sat there in the Egyptian palace for the rest of his days and just lived comfortable and just lived. <laughs> yeah, Moses had all the money, had all the women, he had he, anything he want, possibly want, was right there. Yes, Lord. But the Bible says the reason why Moses would not do that, the Bible says this. It is in the book of Hebrews chapter 11. The Bible says that Moses decided he would rather suffer with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Listen, <laughs> there is pleasure in sin, but it's only for a season. Shabbat do kubasihi. Is your season up yet? See, when when a, when a season is up, when things change in relation, when things change, when you got somebody real, they'll stay there. We're going to get through this. We're going to do this. But when the pleasures of sin is gone, then that person like, well, all right, well, I need to find something else. I'm going to find someone else. Is your season up yet? Then you start saying stuff like, well, we just fell apart. We just fell out of love. We, we, we just drifted. I wonder why I ain't heard from them. I, I... Let me go deep into this thing. This is for the church. Now, if you, like I say, if you're an unbeliever, you can listen too. But this is for the church. Now, don't. What's it on my hand? So now some people are like, I know you better. I know him better than the back of my hand. You know, your hand. Like, what in the world is that? Jesus, man. Um. Let's go deeper. He says the body is not for fornication. Boy, I used to sit in church and and and, and my mentor, my and she'll be reading these scriptures and boy, because I was a man that was out there. And I was like, boy, what? You want to pray for me? He says the body's not for fornication, but for the Lord. And the Lord for the body. Yes, Lord. And God have both and, and God have both raised up the Lord and will also raise up us by his own power. Now, you know, if he was telling the church folk that they're not saved and they're unrighteous, why in the world would he tell them that God's going to raise them up from the grave the same way he raised up Christ? Like I said, he wasn't talking about the unrighteous, uh, righteous souls are righteous. You may be struggling right now, but you're still righteous in the sight of God. Because, because it's, if faith makes you righteous and righteousness is a gift. But if you don't know that, then you'll keep dwelling in sin and keep doing the same thing you're doing. It's like a man living on the street as a bum on the street, right? He's living on the bum street. He's he's eating out of garbage cans. He's standing on the street. He got his cardboard boxes. He got you know he got his, he's out on the street. But what if that man knew he actually was a millionaire? You think he'd still be out there? <laughs> yes, 
you more than what you think. Shama. You ain't got to live like that if you don't want to. But the flesh wants to, but the flesh is going to get tired. Ah, Rabo Doko. One of the things that the Holy Spirit does, the Holy Spirit just doesn't come to make you dance and shout and scream and run the aisles. We find out that the Holy Spirit also comes to convict and to lead you and guide you in the right direction. And also the Holy Spirit leads you and guides you into all truth and brings back to your remembrance the things that God has said unto you. Let me go deep into this thing because I'm running out of tape time. I'm, let me show you some more things. He says this. He says, so he says, the body is not fornication before the Lord and the Lord for the body. Now watch this. And the God have both raised up the Lord and will also raise up, up also by his own power. Know ye not that your bodies, know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ. So he said, he's saying, if you're saved, then we are all, as Christians, are one body. And so I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of a harlot, God forbid. So what he's saying is, basically, when you lay down with that person, we all lay down with that person. Ooh, because this is one body. <laughs> sounds a little, sounds a little, you know, messed up now, don't it? I think sometimes when we, we, I think the thing is, oftentimes also, you know, after we all got saved and, and different things, we have to get under the good Bible study because sometimes we don't understand what we're doing when we commit certain things. We don't understand whom we're hurting. I was, uh, I remember I wrote, uh, and I wrote several books. I remember I wrote this book called the book of the bad boys and I, and I, and I was in, in this particular church and I, and I shared the book with a, another uh, a friend of mine, uh, a brother in Christ and I said here you go man, I want you to read this somewhere I want you to share with you and so yeah, it came to pass you know that I had, you know left the church I was um, going through some other things and I left the church and at the time and, and I'm a man I like to tell my testimonies and different things I've been through because if you're hiding and if you don't tell your real testimony, nobody can be helped. So I'm like, I left the church for a season. And I came back. And that same brother I gave the, the book to, he was like, man, I was looking for you, man. That book you gave me, it blessed me. It, it, it was the bomb. He said it was a bomb book. I mean, I'm like, man. I'm like, whoa. You never know who you're affecting when you are not faithful. <laughs> Paul is letting the church know that said I didn't take the members of Christ and join them to a harlot. He said, God forbid. What? Know ye not he which is joined to a harlot is one body? He says, when you sleep with somebody and when you enter into that person, y'all become one. Because sex is actually meant for, it was meant for marriage. And you consummate that marriage. They are not only they joining, but they joining flesh. They're one. He says, "What? No, you're not. They that was just joined to a harlot. It's one body. For the two say he shall be one flesh." <laughs> you didn't realize that, did you? That yes, God joins them in the spirit, no doubt. You just say married, no doubt. But when you consummate that thing, that flesh is one. She kapo duku. Now you don't want to be one with everybody, do you? duku. Shaba duku. It's hard, ain't it? Shikola baha. Nobody said walking with walking with Christ is easy. Look, go and look at that Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, those Gospels. Those guys had it easy like that? And walking with Christ was easy? No, nah, it, was, it was challenging. It was challenging. It was frustrating. It, it, it was sacrificial. It was all these things. But it was rewarding. Let me show you something right now. Oh, I feel this in the spirit. I don't know if I feel this in the spirit. God said, God, I feel this in my spirit. As soon as you give up him, then God will send you the one you're supposed to be for marriage. As soon as you give him up, 
I don't know who that's for, but as soon as you give him up, here he comes. Here comes the prince. As soon as you give him up, though. Bakoba Sara. I don't know who that was for, but I just fucked in my spirit. What? No, you're not. That which is joined to your heart is one body, and for two say he shall be one flesh. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Flee fornication. Now, some people, some pastors have gotten this wrong because some pastors said this. They said the only sin that God told people to flee from is fornication. That ain't true. Um, God actually said in the word, well, you know, Apostle Paul, through the Lord, through the Spirit of God, he actually said also flee adultery. But he was saying flee fornication because I believe that adultery and uh, fornication and idolatry are one and the same as far as you could you could fornication be can become your god see some folks can't live without sex and that's it that's their and that's their um and that's their um actually some people have confessed that they're like well i can't live without sex. i gotta have something i gotta do it. i gotta have something here i got and it's supposed to be you can't live without god so now fornication sex has replaced god perversion so, heba, sorabat shina makoba, see, and that's why idolatry and fornication um, is hand in hand sometimes. Listen, he says, flee fornication, flee me, escape, run, get your best track shoes out. The problem is, I heard this, and I agree with this so much. The problem is, you've been trying to fight fornication. I don't fight it. Don't go in there and try to fight it. You know, run from it. That's what happened to Joseph when he was being tempted by Potiphar's wife. And Joseph was being tempted by this man's wife, his boss's wife. And his boss's wife was trying to sleep with Joseph. And she kept egging him on every day. And one day it got so hot for Joseph, he had to run up out of there. And left his coat and everything behind. He had to go. Some of you keep trying to stay there and fight and keep falling every time. He got to run, baby. If listen, let me tell you what run is. Don't answer the text. Block the number. Block them on Facebook. What is what is what 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 is running? Don't answer the door when they come over. Even though you might have told them to come over, don't answer the door. Turn around that red light. Don't flee. Oh, we just gonna chill and watch some movies. Oh, we just gonna chill and have some dinner. I, 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 I. Oh, we just gonna have a cup of coffee. You know, it's ain't seen in a while. Uh, I, I know that. Nope. Flee. Oh, there's something wrong with going to the movies. We're just going to go. We're just going to chill. We ain't going to do anything. We're just going to have friends still. Uh, flee. Oh, well, that, uh, no, I'm just, just going to invite you over. You know, I'm just going to, you know, I got this new new couch I want you to see. Oh, and that's so, and I'm just going to chill with you. It's been a while since I heard from you. You know what I mean? And we ain't, we ain't, we ain't got nothing between us anymore. Hey, but we can just go bowling. And if you want to come out here and... Flee. <laughs> I'll just answer this text. I mean, hey, girl, I ain't heard from you. Well, what's going on? It, 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 just trying to see if you're all right. Flee. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body. But he that committed fornication sinneth against his own body. In other words, we're saying, oh, and I love it because I love how he had put we are, as a body, we are the members of Christ. So I know how I love how he's putting it there because we don't defraud the body. We don't sin against the whole body. It affects the church because the church is the body. <laughs> what? Know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you? What you have a God and you are not your own? You thought, man, you stuck. Once you said, I do to Christ, you're stuck. You ain't no divorce in him. He's in you, and you in him. No, you're not to your body. It's a temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you. Which you have of God. You're not your own. For you have been bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Your spirit and your body belongs to God. And it's been bought by the blood of Jesus Christ. And there's no refunds. God bless you and keep you in Jesus' name. Listen, it's tight, and it? Hey, but if it's a word, then I must have did it. If it's not, then I wasn't with it. Stick with it.